Well, hey there, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. <laughs> I'm running just a little late tonight. It's just been one of those days. The kids have started up their after school activities in person a little bit. And so I've become taxi mom. We had a dentist appointment and jazz band and a grocery store run and another jazz band. And then I had to go and pick up a prescription at the pharmacy. Oh, and so, as always, I feel like I'm doing a little last minute scramble getting ready, but I do have some fun things to show you tonight, and I'm super excited about some of these new products. So, say hi when you jump on, give me a thumbs up or a heart, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay, and say hi to all your stamping friends who are watching live with you. What are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> Are you buried under snow? Hopefully, you all have power. Oh my gosh, I've been hearing about everybody in Texas and all over the United States who have just been having all kinds of issues related to these winter storms. And I have to say, it was sunny today, and even though we still had snow on the ground and it was cold, it was warmer than it has been, and the sunshine felt so good. I hope that the sun was shining wherever you are, <laughs> and I hope you're doing well tonight. Um, I feel a little scattered as far as uh, what I want to show you, and so one of the last things I pulled out, and I thought, oh, we should do this, <laughs> so I'm just going to... We're just going to wing it. Um, but one of the things that we do over in the Julie Stamping Spot Share and Connect group it was, is we do a color challenge every other week. And so I posted a color challenge on Friday. And the colors, I think many of you are finding a little bit tricky. And honestly, it's an interesting color combination. These are the colors that are the color um, combination. We've got Pretty Peacock and Mary Merlot, Terracotta Tile and Mango Melody. So we have mixed some color families going on in here. Both um, Pretty Peacock and Terracotta Tile are in colors that are retiring. And many of you are kind of stumped by Mary Merlot. This is a newer color. It's in the neutrals. And, um, and then Mango Melody is also new. That's in the brights. But as I'm sitting here, and I don't know how it looks on camera, but Mary Merlot... Um, is reminding me right now of Rich Razzleberry. And so I just want to pull this in so you guys can see the difference. Okay. Oh, that is it's pretty close. So this one's Rich Razzleberry and this one's Mary Merlot. So definitely we have more of a, like a burgundy going on. And oops, since we're talking about burgundy, let's pull in like Cherry Cobbler just as a, as another comparison. So it's sort of in between, this is Cherry Cobbler, Mary Merlot, and Rich Razzleberry. So it's kind of like if Cherry Cobbler and Rich Razzleberry had a baby, <laughs> it would be Mary Merlot. Um, so it's a really unique color. And you might be wondering how I came up with this color combination. It was this beautiful paper that inspired me. So this paper is the, um, it's called Art Gallery. And it's the cover, cover girl, as I say, of the, um, of the mini catalog. So let me just open up. Oh, I thought it was going to be at the beginning. Let me see. Uh, Fine Art Floral, page 32 to 34. Okay, so um, we've got these gorgeous colors in um, this designer paper, which is called Fine Art. No. Yes. <laughs> Fine Art Designer Paper. Part of this suite is this painted texture embossing folder, which oh, I have just been loving so much. We also have this gorgeous ribbon, this Fine Art Floral Ribbon. And um, this really pretty stamp set called Art Gallery. That's where I was getting the art gallery from. You can see so many gorgeous samples. So one of the designer papers, let me, <laughs> let me get rid of some of our extra stuff here. One of the designer papers um, has some of these colors in it. So we've got like the mango color in here, this dark color, which I always thought was Rich Razzleberry's actually, Mary Merlot. And then we've got some of the peacock and the terracotta tile in there as well. So this was my inspiration for the color combination. So we're gonna make a card today um, using this color combination. 
for my challenge. And if you have been creating with this challenge, I really hope that you'll share your card in the Julie's Stamp and Spot Share and Connect group because I would love to see how you're inspired by these colors and what you're creating. So let's actually use a piece of this. It does have some of extra colors that aren't part of the color challenge but I think I'm gonna use this corner this piece and um, the colors that are prominent here are the mango melody and the pretty peacock and the terracotta tiles I think I'm gonna use those three colors on this card although I also was looking at this one <laughs> and I think you could make a really pretty card I almost like that okay I think tonight I'm gonna use this but maybe I'll make another card with the other paper. Yeah, other cards creeping in on this. Okay, so card layout wise, I was really inspired by this card. This is one that Melody Hyde shared during on stage um, in November, and I was obsessed with not only her progression of easy stepped up and over the top, but I really just love the layout. So I wanted to create a card with this layout tonight using the colors and designer paper. So um, I'm going to just figure out the measurements as I go, because I have not made this card yet, but I will share um, the measurements when we get them all figured out. So for this white piece, instead of stamping, I'm gonna use the designer paper. And I'm gonna start with a piece that is two and a half inches. Um, I fe I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm measuring it like that's gonna work. I feel like that's a good place to start. Let's make our card base be, I think I'm gonna need a different, a different cut of this paper. And I'm gonna get squeeze up to two and three quarters. Let's go two and three quarters by mm, 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 four and a quarter. I'm going to turn that down two and a half. Okay. I'm liking this cut better. I feel like it, inc it incorporates our colors a little more. So I'm going to do um, five and a half, which is half a sheet of cardstock. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. You guys get a little behind the scenes look tonight because usually I don't create from scratch like this. Um, okay, so for the background piece, she's got the same color, blue on blue. I'm gonna use this Mary Merlot. Gosh, it's so pretty. Um, let's cut this to be three. Let's cut three and a half and see what we think. So this is sometimes when I'm creating and I'm trying to copy an idea, like I just sort of cut and then see, like, okay, that looks good, but maybe I wanna cut just a little bit more off. So it was three and a half, I'm gonna go three and a quarter. That's looking good. Do you think that looks about right? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Um, okay, and then for the sentiments, I pulled in, you know, oh, I forgot I was going to use the texture embossing folder. So let's do some texture. Um, look at that painted texture. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I'm going to send this through with the um, Stampin' Cotton Emboss Machine. I just had to reach down and grab my pad. We gotta, we gotta get out Big Boss for this one. <laughs> um, use it with thin dice. I don't think we use that one. So I've got the embossing folder and then this um, number four is the 3D embossing folder plate. That's our sandwich. Look at that gorgeous texture. And you could use like either side. Like I don't think that there's a wrong, a wrong side. I like that one better. Let's move this out of the way. Let's grab our adhesive. Okay. Digging it. Yes. That was called painted texture embossing folder. That's the one that we're using. Um, 
if I miss a question, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to keep up, but it's hard to see um, sometimes the questions. Okay, for the sentiments, I love how she used the little one and a half inch circle punch. I use the circle punches a lot, and this is the smallest one that we have um, currently. So let's pull in this mango color, and we'll do a little, just like, this is a really bright color. So I'm just going to do like just a little, just a little, um, just a little splash of mango. And I thought that the sentiments from this Touch of Ink stamp set would be a good size. So this is actually the one I was thinking of right here. It says, thinking of you. Touch of Ink is a celebration stamp set. This is a level two. I think we used it last week. Um, so you may remember we've got, it's two different sheets in here. So it's kind of like a double stamp set. And, um, you know what, I wanna, I wanna show you both options because sometimes I, I do this, I try it both ways. So I went to pull out the ink and I, my first inclination was black because that is just sort of a nice basic color and you can see it really well. But the Mary Merlot is also a really dark color. So I'm gonna try with Mary Merlot as well. And we can see which one we like better. Yeah, earlier today, I thought, okay, Julie, you have to remember to get your stamp, your chamois wet. And then I did all that running around and I totally forgot. <laughs> okay. That is lighter than I thought it would be. I'm going to try to stamp again in the corner. Maybe it's not as dark as I think. Okay. So basic black and then the Merlot. Tell me what you guys think. And I'm I'm worried that this mango is not the right color, actually. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. What other color goes in this paper? For this little bit of the paper, I think it looks more like, um, yeah, bumblebee. Let's grab a scrap. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to do the color challenge, but it's going to bother me because it's just not the right color. Okay. That's the right color, and it looks so much better. But you guys are, let's see what you're saying. I see Merlot, Merlot, black. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> That so you know, I think it's a thing. Some people just do not like colors on colored cardstock. So Merlot on the mango is just not working. Maybe it works better on the bumblebee because the the mango is just the wrong color. Um a lot of you are saying black, but a lot of you are saying Merlot. I'm not counting, but I kind of like the Merlot, so I'm just gonna go with that one. Um, this is pretty close though. And you can you can do it both ways. I'll save these. I have a little bag. Let me show you. I have a bag of all my like spare pieces, you know, from trying one color or leftover things. And I give it to my daughters and they um and they make cards with them and uh they, they love all those little sort of pre-cut goodies. Okay, so this isn't gonna work for the color challenge, but it is so beautiful. Um, and the inspiration had a little bit of ribbon. So I'm going to bring in, oh my God, look at this ribbon. It's so pretty. This is the fine art floral ribbon. This is in this, on the same page as the designer paper and the embossing folder. I'll put all the item numbers in the video description when I'm all done. So if you want to go shopping, you can do that at juliedavison.com slash shop. And then, um, you get free celebration gifts if you, um, if you order $50 or more. So that, oh my gosh, I can't believe there's only 10 days left of celebration. So do not miss out on all these freebies, such as the touch of ink, um, because you'll be so sad. <laughs> um, they are all exclusive to celebration and will not be available again when celebration is over. So uh, make sure that you get all your favorites in the next 10 days because that will be it. 
And then all of these beautiful papers and stamp sets. I'm looking for my tearing tape. Where? Remarkably, my desk is pretty clean, but my tearing tape is missing. Um, I'll just get out another one. I love this tear and tape. Uh, it's a really sturdy adhesive for 3D projects or fun folds. I like it because you can just tear it right off the roll. And so I also use it a lot to hold ribbon in place. It's a double-sided adhesive. Let me make sure I'm getting this on straight. Double-sided, but when I use it to hold the ribbon in place, I don't, um, I don't necessarily remove the other, other side of it. Okay. Oh, okay, I like this ribbon, but now I'm not sure <laughs> about the yellow because I really feel like it is, it's clashing with the yellow. Oh, goodness. I stepped away to bring in green. This is from the Ornate Garden ribbon. I, I feel like it needs green instead, either the green ribbon or a piece of green cardstock. Yeah, it pulls out the green. It sure does. Let's grab a piece of cardstock and see. The green. Is this the right green? Oh, maybe it's Mossy Meadow. Yep. Mossy Meadow. I'm a little skinnier. I'm using the tailored tag punch to punch the little banners. I love doing that. And um, you know, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go all the way across and we'll do one on the other side. So this is where sometimes I depart. <laughs> I depart a little from the original inspiration and I kind of make my own, I make my own little thing. Oh, now I'm not liking the yellow. <laughs> I'm probably driving you guys crazy tonight, huh? Um, what about just doing a white circle? Tell me, okay, do you guys like the yellow or do you, do you think we should change and do... a white? The Evolution of a Card by Julie Davison. <laughs> oh. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So, hi, <laughs> Kay. Oh, yellow. Okay, you guys do like the yellow. I think the white gets a little washed out, maybe. Funny how you guys are so <laughs> white, not white, yellow, not yellow. 
really, I mean, just like everything else with stamping, it all comes down to like personal preference, right? Yellow, no ribbon. That is how I'm leaning, Carla. <laughs> Coming back to the original sketch, instead of ribbon, we'll use the um, we'll use the cardstock banner, and then I'm just going to come back down to the right corner there. Goldfish ribbon, <laughs> Eva. It does look like goldfish ribbon. It's really pretty. Um, <laughs> we make quite a mess. I'm really liking this. I think I'm going to glue it down. What do you guys think? Um, I, I, I strayed, I strayed a little from the colors and I, maybe I will try to make up the same card with this corner, um, really quick because this corner I think would do it for our colors. So let's glue this down. And, um, and then we can cut a second one really quick and I can share the measurements with you as I'm creating the second card. Okay, so this is gonna go, I feel like I almost need to put this one on first. Okay, that's gonna go down in the corner. We're gonna use some stamp dimensionals underneath the circle. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Okay, let's do a quick little sweep into the garbage. Okay, we're gonna do this same card really, really quick using um, this other pattern of designer paper. So if you're just joining, we're using the um, Fine Art Floral designer paper. And my original intent was to um, make a card for my color challenge. And so the color challenge cards or colors are Pretty Peacock, Mary Merlot, Terracotta Tile, and um, Mango Melody. So we're going to use a piece of designer paper that has Mango Melody and Terracotta Tile and Pretty Peacock. So our designer paper, let me just measure to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it is two and a half inches by four and a quarter. So two and a half inches by four and a quarter. I wanted to get lots of that flower, so I kind of moved it over. Two and a half by four and a quarter. We have our card front. And then I'm gonna bring in some terracotta tile for the piece behind. So this is three and a quarter by three and a half. Three and a quarter by three and a half. Um, nope. Three and a quarter by, yeah, three and a quarter by three and a half. Why is that not the same? Did I not cut it right? Three and a half. I didn't cut it right. <laughs> okay, three and a quarter by three and a half. And we're going to use the um, um, painted texture. So I'm going to do this off camera really quick. And get 
some of our paper out of the way. I think the mango makes more sense over here, doesn't it? So we're going to do that. And you know, I'm going to stamp thinking of you in Pretty Peacock. Just a reminder again, Pretty Peacock, Terracotta Tile, um, Rococo Rose, Purple Posy. These are all colors that are retiring. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad. But they will be retiring and leaving um, in just um, like six weeks. When, what, we're going to have the retiring list late Um We'll have it late, um, I'm having a brain fart, Me. <laughs> late March, um, because the brand new annual catalog will be coming out at the beginning of May, and so we'll have the retiring list in March, the very end of March, and in um, very end of March, and then in April. Okay, for the little strip, we're gonna do a half inch by two and a half. See how well I guessed that. Yeah, half inch by two and a half. Isn't quite straight. Better. Look how look how fast we can make a card when we know what we want to do. <laughs> okay, so this one does use our color challenge colors. We did not cheat like we did on the other card. That's going to go down in the corner. Some Stampin' Dimensionals. One, two, three. And then you guys will have to tell me which one you like better. Okay. Here again was my inspiration, card by Melody Hyde. And so I used the same layout and the same designer paper, but I changed up the colors. So do you like the terracotta tile card better or do you like the pretty peacock card better? So leave me a comment, this or that, and tell me which one you prefer while I tidy up my space and get ready for our next project. I made quite a little mess. Oh my gosh, I can't decide. I think, I think I'm leaning towards this one, but um, I, lo I love this color combination. Like it's so unique and different. It looks like you guys are really torn too. I'm seeing lots of that. Pretty peacock, pretty peacock, pretty peacock. Oh, maybe you guys aren't as torn as I thought. Pretty peacock. Yeah, the embossing folder totally just gives it like a little extra texture, Carla. I totally agree. Um, and you guys, from what I'm seeing, many or most of you are saying you really like the pretty peacock. I think it's just such an unusual color combination. Um, and I think that is what is so striking about it. Okay. Awesome. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you got to make them both. They're both great. <laughs> I don't want to say that one's bad because I do really love it. Okay. Are you guys ready for another card? Oh, I 
I'm always inspired by cards that I see. Um, and so sometimes I make them up exactly. And sometimes I um, just copy the layout and the idea like this one. And again, I did not have the measurements. So I just kind of made them up. Um, let, I'm going to put them in the description, but let me just jot them down for you really quick. Um, okay, so we have our card base, which was five and a half by eight and a half um, card base. And then the the embossed piece that was three and a quarter by three and a half. I'm gonna say embossed. And the designer paper was two and a half by four and a quarter. DSP. That's what DSP means. Designer series paper. And then it was a one and a half inch circle. The banner is three quarter inches by two and a half. Okay, that's the measurements in case you want to create this card at home and redo it, whether you're using um, the same stamp set that Melody used or some designer paper like I did. This is sort of cheating. <laughs> Instead of stamping and coloring, I just let the designer paper do all the work. But you know what? We have such beautiful designer paper that um, why not? Why not let the paper do the work? Did I measure that right? Yeah, two and a half. Okay. All right. We're putting this one aside. I was also inspired by this, oops, by this project. Um, and this is one that Stampin' Up! Concept Artist created. So it's, it's possible that Melody created this one as well. And again, here's the same progression between um, simple and stepping it up and then just over the top with all the different accessories. So this one, I thought I would use this designer paper. This is the Flower and Field designer paper um, from Celebration. And again, you only have like 10 days left to get this beautiful paper. So if you haven't yet, or, or you really love it and you wanna get more, um, you, you wanna make sure you get your order in um, in the next 10 days. So this paper has a black background with these bright, beautiful flowers and then some gorgeous B-side patterns there. So I have cut my, um, my banner pieces. I cut them to be um, three quarters of an inch. And I just did like three inches, I think. Um, and I'm going to cut all the ends. And then I'm trying to decide what color to use for the card base. I think this is mint macaron. But um, I kind of liked pink or black or this is just jade. Um, which I kind of like better than the mint. So um, tell me what color card base we should use. While I am punching the ends, again, I'm gonna use this Taylor Tag Punch and I'm gonna punch um, the ends of the card or the designer paper. Actually, I actually think I need to make them a little shorter. So I'm gonna go up a little farther on my punch there. This is kind of like a you pick night, isn't it? You guys are helping me make all the decisions. <laughs> Oh, and you guys are torn. So many options. And again, like, I don't think you could go wrong with any of these. Okay, I cut strips of all six designer paper, but I think we really only want to use five. Um, we talked about that before, like, um, you know, the rule of threes, you always want to use an odd number, whether it's like three or five. So we're going to do five banners. Um, and let me see. Okay, I'm trying to look at your answers. So I've got pink, jade, jade, black, pink, jade or black. It makes the designer paper pop. Okay, I see a lot of jade. I think we're going to go with jade because that's what you guys are saying. Um, and I think you're right. I think the pink is kind of too light. So let's take the pink away. And here it is on the black. But I, I think the pop of color, the pop of jade, um, I, I, I like that, I think. Okay, so evening out the jade a little bit. What do you guys think of that? Does that combination look good? 
trim that up a little bit more. We could go pink stripes there. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> swap the two ends yeah I think separating the yellow I think that works okay so we have our banner pieces and our card stock this is um this is just whisper white and I cut it at three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches so I have just a quarter inch off either side so you can see that um black instead of white I'm trying to read Tanya's comment what about the black instead of white done on the piece of jade so black like black here I got these all mixed up again didn't I Well, I was going to go with the simple and do the white. So that wouldn't work unless I embossed. I'm going to stick with the white, I think, on this one. Um, so let's glue these down. I really love the twine that's on here. I'm not sure if you can see that in the photo. Um, but it's, it's really simple and pretty. Okay, let's kind of going to go... Oh, that one's. So I'm I'm putting them kind of up and down and you know not all like straight across. change that one a little I think we need to come over a smidge with these Ugh. so um one little tip now that I've put them on <laughs> this other way um, one little tip I would say would be to like position them with the, like the middle one first and then kind of work out so that you can um, space them evenly how you want them to be. Okay, so I love that. That's what we're going to do across the card. And then they've got some twine on here. So I'm using the snail mail pink and white twine combination. I'm so excited that we have white twine again because um, it's my favorite. <laughs> I was sad when he got retired from the annual catalog, but it's back. Now we have a great twine combination in, with the snail mail twine. So we've got pink and white. And so I'm going to use some of the pink and um, I'm going to tie a bow around the cardstock. Before we put it on the card front. So tie it and then tweak it. slide it over that's so cute
Okay, it's gonna go on our card. Now we're gonna bring in some black for the words. Um, I forgot to get, I forgot to get um, a stamp set out. What do I have? You know what, let's bring in, I have this, thank you, this is gonna work, from Sweet Strawberry. And we're going to do that in black. Here's our black ink. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. What is the... Um hear my dog in the other room it doesn't so oh, doesn't sound like she's well hopefully she's okay um let's bring in some flirty flamingo this strawberry is also from the um is that too much <laughs> too late because we already did it <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Oh, Julie, Julie, Julie. <laughs> uh, I've punched, I see I'm just strawberry and I'm going to punch it out. Um, I was thinking we could put it up here. What do you think? bring some of that pink in um and we need a little embellishment on that strawberry so i'm going to bring in the matte black dot this uh is part of the true love or love you always suite from the mini catalog so we're just mixing mixing and matching our sweets okay so what i wish i would have done was stamped one and then punched two but it's done <laughs> so uh we're gonna glue it down and i'm not sure did i just like spit i've got like two little watermarks oh man i'm not tearing this apart <laughs> i'm not tearing this card apart maybe i will remake it later though <laughs> um okay I'm going to center that. I'm having trouble trying to center it on camera. Okay. There we go. I will trim that later. See how it like, there's a little edge there. I'll get the, the trimmer out and trim that up. All right, and let's add our little punched flower. And there we got, we got some pops of pink as well. Okay, what do you guys think? You can see that there are lots of ways to dress this up. So um, on this card, they, they punched some flowers and they did a little stitched label across. And so this one, they have the cardstock color on the top and the bottom, and they cut that a little bit differently. And then here they've cut out and used some stitching and some like all kinds of, all kinds of things. But this is sort of like in between those two. <laughs> In hindsight, maybe I would make the banners a little shorter too, but this is a fun way to use up your scraps of designer paper. So again, this was three quarters of an inch wide. If you wanna remake this at home, you can do this with any, any of your designer paper. I might try this as well with the um, paper blooms paper. Um, this one, so I think that would be really pretty. So watch for that, I'll, I'll post another sample um, and I'll tweak my... <laughs> I'll tweak my um, my size on the banners a little bit. I think make them a little shorter. But I think that turned out well. 
So we've been we've been casing a lot. What do I have left for you? Oh gosh, yes. I'm so excited about our next project. Don't go anywhere. If I bored you with that one, then I'll wake you up with this <laughs> next project. So I don't know. Hopefully, if you're watching, you're not bored. Um <laughs> I'm not bored. <laughs> um, okay, cleaning up my mess so that we can craft some more. I feel like I just keep shoving things. Okay, let's put this aside. We'll review at the end all of our projects. But the next thing I have to share with you is something brand new. Um, as a demonstrator, we get to pre-order products before they're available to everybody else. And so right now in February, demonstrators can pre-order the Butterfly Bouquet um, products. So this is really fun. This bundle is going to be in the annual catalog when it comes out. So this is an early release. Um, and then we have this exclusive designer paper and also this natural touch designer paper or specialty paper that are not going to be in the annual catalog. So they're just only going to be available during the promotion. So demonstrators can order right now. This is going to be available for customers next month in March. So if you are not not a demonstrator yet, you can join my team right now in February and get bonus designer paper, right? During celebration, you get an extra five packs of um, designer paper. Um, and then if you want, you can get the butterfly bouquet in your starter kit. So you can choose anything you want, $125 in product, and it's only $99 plus tax. Shipping is free. It's such a great deal. So if you join as a demonstrator, you can pre-order this now, or if you don't want to um, do that, you can wait and order it next month in March. So this is kind of a little sneak peek of what's coming. The stamp set bundle includes the Butterfly Brilliance stamp, and this is one giant stamp. Okay, so all the butterflies are on one big stamp, and then the dies that coordinate have a big die that die cuts all the butterflies at once and then it also has some detail dies and some accessory dies um i have a little cut out of the here it is okay so here's what these little accessory dies look like so we've got the bricks we've got these little hash Marks are, so they actually cut them into the cardstock. So it's sort of like this texture and then like this little confetti piece. And then I didn't die cut these, but those are just little butterflies. So um, all these detailed butterflies fit on top of the solid die cuts. So I've got my little, it's all in a box. <laughs> I've got some examples of that. So here's like the solid butterfly in the detail um layers on top like that isn't that cool oh my gosh these butterflies are so awesome I'm going to show you some card samples and then I'm going to finish up some cards that I started over the weekend because the thing I was waiting for just arrived well before I do that let me show you the paper so this designer paper butterfly bijou is a six by six designer paper um, it's a little bit different than our regular six by six paper because normally six by six paper has like 12 different patterns um, and this has six patterns but then you get um, six of each sheet is that right six no six times six is 36 eight of each sheet because there's 48 sheets all together um just like always it's double-sided so bright and cheerful like so pretty for spring and this paper you can die cut the butterflies right from the designer paper isn't that awesome <laughs> this is such a fun set so let me show you some of the cards that i've made and then we'll finish up that one. So here's some where, um, oh, I forgot about this specialty paper. So here's a, a bigger piece of the specialty paper. So what is it called? Um, natural touch. So it's got this wood grain and it's real. It's a really, really thin designer paper. It comes as 12 by 12 and you get two sheets of it in a package. Okay, so on this one, I use that, um, that, 
paper and I cut those little hash marks in it. And then I did a, a designer paper butterfly as well as a vellum detail butterfly over it. Here's one where I did I die cut from the designer paper and then did the detail in black over it. This is embossed in white, and then I used a little bit of that natural paper behind there. On this one and this one, all four of these cards, I used the Artistry Blooms um, sequins to embellish them. Here's one where I stamped in Misty Moonlight on Bermuda Bay, and then I used the designer paper and a strip of that, um, what is it called? <laughs> natural touch um I, I keep wanting to say like birchwood um natural touch so thinking of you happy birthday thank you all of those sentiments are from the happy thoughts stamp set it's new in the mini catalog here's a combination i would not have put together on my own this is um magenta madness and calypso coral isn't that interesting? I pulled the color combination from the designer paper, um, and it's really beautiful together, but I definitely would not have put those two colors together on my own. Okay, so for this next card, let me put these away. For the next card, I used this die, and I die cut from... Um, a solid piece of cardstock. By the way, um, the size that you'll need to stamp and cut from is five inches by six inches. Um, let me write that down really quick. I think it's five, or was it five and a half? Five, yeah. Okay, so five by six. So when you get your butterflies, your uh, the paper that you want to cut, the cardstock is going to be five by six. Okay, remember that. Um, so what I did was I die cut from the designer paper. Okay, I did that and die cut the butterflies. And one of the things I noticed when I did that is that the butterflies, many of them were in colors. So just jade, misty moonlight, magenta madness and then the color that it says coordinates with the um this one it says well i think this is mango mango melody and so saffron but i thought it looked really good with bumblebee so this is really pretty with the in colors these are the 2020 2022 in colors so what i did is i die cut um, a whole bunch, well, I die cut a sheet. So I, I die cut the designer paper and then I die cut a whole sheet of Just Jade, Misty Moonlight, um, Bumblebee, and Magenta Madness. So I'm gonna pull out all the, we're gonna do Just Jade for this card. And here's all my other ones. So I'm just gonna move these out of the way. I have a little, this is the bag that the die came in. And so I've, I've just been using it as a little storage bag for all my little pieces. Okay, so we're going to use, we got one sheet of um, solid cardstock and then the designer paper. And then for this card, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to have a white card base and a white card front. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. And then the card front is three, it's, what is it? It's three and seven eighths inch by five and one eighth inch. So it's like a little bit shorter than a regular card front. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, tile all of these um, pieces. So we're gonna lay them out. So first we'll stick this one kind of where we want it to go. Um, and then we're going to just tile the other butterflies. And they're gonna hang off of the, um, they're gonna hang off the paper, but that's okay. So we're gonna do kind of 
all over from all the angles and you can um I just want it to look like it kind of flows so um you can move them around and get them just how you want them to be I do have the butterflies kind of going um you know different directions so we just get some different sides of the wings um Jim are you down here can you turn that fan off please Okay, so now I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals underneath the designer paper. And I'm going to put the other ones on with um, the regular adhesive. Now, I've, I've seen a technique where you can use, um, what is it called, the, um, the press and seal, like... Yeah, like the saran wrap and they use that to kind of hold all of the um all of the pieces in place where they want it to go and then they you know put all the i don't know that i'm just i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm just gonna put them where i want them and glue them down um i am a quick and easy kind of stamper so i don't want to mess around with press and seal i'm just gonna glue them down um one at a time and when I put them down, you know, that, that'll kind of remind me where I want them to go. And it, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so last one. Okay, and then I am going to just trim all the way around. I know some of you are probably just not happy that I'm using these big scissors on cardstock. Oh, some of you I know reserve them for just ribbon, but I I use them when I need to cut like a long piece like that. So nice, good, clean cut. Okay, so we've got we've got our um, kind of our border there, and that designer paper one just really pops now off the cardstock. So now I'm going to use. Um, Stampin' Dimensionals to add this to the card base because this is it's kind of a simple card right like there's not a lot to it so I'm just going to add a little bit of dimension we've got the um oops the the one butterfly is on um is on dimensionals and everything else is just regular seal and so the whole card front now is going to go on with dimensionals and I played around with this um, when I did my team meeting earlier this month, I played around and debated whether to put this on to a black card base or um, or a white card, or not black, or the jade, you know, a color. But I really like it on the white because I think it just really, really, really pops. Okay, so I did this then with all of the other colors. Okay, so we've got the Misty Moonlight and the Bumblebee and the... Magenta Madness. And so today, what I was waiting for finally arrived. <laughs> I wanted to add sentiments with the Many Messages bundle. And I didn't have this, so I ordered it. Now, um, this bundle, this is, again, just like the butterflies, this is all one stamp. I have it on my stamp apparatus, so let me just pull that into place. Okay, so it's all one stamp. So one stamp does all these words. And then just like the bumblebee, it has a die that die cuts all of the words at once and creates all these different labels. So let me show you that really quick. Let's put these aside. We're going to add the sentiments in just a minute. Um, and so we're going to bring in, I find that this is it's easiest to use with the stamp apparatus when you have such a large stamp. Um, so the the stamparatus has these um these plates that that hinge so you can have one here and you can have one here um and 
than your cardstock. So it just is makes it easier to stamp a large piece like this. There's also some really fun techniques. We'll have to do a whole Stamparatus series because it's something I definitely do not use as much as I should. Um, so I'm going to do this in black and um, I'm just inking up this stamp. And then I'm going to stamp on a piece of white cardstock. And the good thing about the Stamparatus is like if you don't get a, a good clean image, you can just like put it right back down and add some more ink as long as your paper doesn't shift. <laughs> but then there's some tricks about, you know, making little templates and using the magnets to hold it in place. So you can kind of put it back where it needs to be. Okay, so... Oh, see, like that didn't. Let's see if we can do it because I don't think it shifted. Um, oh, I think I'm missing my little um, my little sponge. Okay, pray that I don't mess this up. Did my paper shift? Oh. <laughs> yes, it did. Okay, let's do the other side. And then if it doesn't go all the way, I'm just going to, we're going to go with it. Two sides to every paper, right, guys? Okay. Again, this is the Many Messages bundle. That was a little bit better, but we still have some missing, missing things. Many Messages bundle. This is in the mini catalog. And then we're going to take... Again, we need the big stamp and cut and emboss machine for this one. So we're going to take uh, our cutting plate and the die. Here's a little trick for the die. Um, you can see the stamp has its words, but then there are some images like the heart, the star, the star, and the star. And so um, to line up the die, just focus on lining up those hearts and stars, and that will help you to get um, the die kind of where it's supposed to be to cut everything straight. So that's going to go through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, I have to find the other plate. It's somewhere, <laughs> what is it underneath? It's somewhere on my desk. Nope, it's down here on the floor. I don't know how it got down there. All right, and we'll kind of hold that and pray it doesn't shift. <laughs> oh, whew. oh my goodness. Okay, so cracking is normal, but I, I've not heard that in a while. Um, okay, so our die cut out all our little sentiments. So now we have these wonderful little tags. So you can do them in different colors and have them um, like in a little jar on your desk and they're ready to go to embellish your cards. So I'm gonna move this down here. I did white so that you could see it and it would be easy, but for our cards, I made up some black sentiments with white embossing. I really wanted the colors to be the showcase. So I wanted something to just pop. Okay, so we've got some sentiments that we could put on here now, and we have so many options with the many merry messages. That's too big, I think. Oh my gosh, oh, it's gonna be so hard to decide. Um, so I, I, had, I had one really good one, and then I had one that was not so good, so I've got like half, half and, and half. So this is more, this is like one and a half um, <laughs> stamps worth. Uh, love these long ones, especially on this card. So um, 
you can just mix and match and play around and decide what you want the card to say. But I, I feel like they all work so well. Um, I don't think that there's a bad one. Like any of these work. Um, your kindness means more than you could ever know. I just love the way those pop on the, um, on the, on the colors. Don't you think? Okay, so again, that was Many Merry Messages. This is a bundle that you can get right now um, in the mini catalog. Let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to find the page back here and show you where you can find it in your mini catalog. I didn't think that I needed it. <laughs> I, I was resisting this bundle because I thought, I mean, it's cool, but um, I don't know. I just, I wasn't so sure. Like this, this really pops with the colors there. But there's so many ways you can use it, right? So I finally caved. And when you buy them together, you save 10%. So if you get the many messages bundle with the die, it's $50.25. And then you'll qualify for a celebration gift. So that's awesome. Um, and then just a reminder too, the butterfly bouquet, which is what I used, the dies and the designer paper, that will not be available until March. So this is kind of a sneak peek um, of that. And then it'll be available until in March. Unless you're a demonstrator, you can order it right now. And if you're not a demonstrator, you can get it in your starter kit. So you can get the whole shebang the whole bundle, $71.25. You can get that in your starter kit. Um, oh my gosh, let me do some quick math. <laughs> so $71.25. And then the many messages bundle is $50.25. So that is, oh no, it's just over. Oh man, no, 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 it's just under. You can choose $125 in product for $99. Um, when you buy the demonstrator starter kit. So you can get the whole Butterfly Brilliance collection and you can get the Many Messages bundle um, in your starter kit and then you'll get the free designer paper pack and you can choose, what, $3.50 <laughs> left so you can get like some, I'll have to see what's $3.50. What an amazing deal. And then you can make a whole bunch of awesome cards. So if you're interested in joining as a demonstrator, I'm going to put the link in the description when we're all done. But it's tinyurl.com slash SU starter kit. And that's how you can join my team and buy the demonstrator starter kit. You can get the Butterfly Brilliance. Let me give you that item number. 159408. That's everything. That's the stamps and the dies and both papers. Um, and you can get that in your demonstrator starter kit. What an awesome deal. Oh, Barb says sponges. Are the sponges $350? How perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay, I seriously, I cannot decide, but you guys tell me which of these butterfly cards is your favorite. Do you like the Bumblebee or the Just Jade or the Misty Moonlight or Magenta Madness? I haven't glued my sentiments yet. <laughs> I'm going to play around with them a little bit when I'm all done. Um, and I've got more butterflies cut, so I might just make a whole bunch more cards. Um, let me scoot these over. I'm going to bring in our other cards so we can do a quick review because that is the end of Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. We made quite a few cards tonight. We made, um, well, we we made one card, but I, show, I showed you the others. And then we did um, the banner card, and we did this one with the, the fun layout that we copied from Melody Hyde. So I hope that I've inspired you with the projects that I shared and that you will try some of these cards and layouts at home. Thank you for tuning in for Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. So I, I want to give you one last reminder. Celebration is almost over. It ends on February 28th, which is in 10 days. So over the next week, I will be doing special daily celebration spotlight videos to share some of my favorite projects and some new projects using the celebration items before they're gone. So be sure to tune in. I'm thinking 1 o'clock p.m. every day between now and February 28th. 
28th. So that means join me tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. because I will be sharing my first celebration spotlight here on Facebook and uploading to YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Happy stamping!